Who, who is exactly is Birquni? The reality is that nobody really knows. That nobody really knows. Uh, Imam al Birquni, nobody really knows who it is. Nobody really knows when he died. Nobody really knows much about this individual. Nobody really knows much about this individual. Some say his name is Taha. Taha ibn Muhammad ibn Fattuh. Ibn Fattuh al Birquni. Some say no, his name is Umar. Umar ibn Muhammad ibn Fattuh. Now, the reason why I highlight this particular fact is because of the fact that um, this has taken place to other individuals as well. Where you have an entire book, an entire text. I have a collection of 10 books at home um, from uh, the, the works of the ulama of fiqh in India. It's a collection, this bit, this way. It's taught widely all across India. All, well, particularly South India. Alright? You have fiqh in there, you have a little bit of aqidah, you have a little bit of everything. You have a little bit of tazkiyat and nafs, a little bit of everything. طيب. Now, when, if a person wants to ask who's written this book, and for centuries they've been teaching it on, okay? Uh, you, nobody knows who's written that, those books. Nobody knows who's written those books. Ten books entirely, completely written. Nobody knows who those, uh, who's written those books. Similarly, Bayquniya, the only reason why we, we remember who, you know, Bayquniya is attributed towards is because of, you know, the name sort of entails the author as well, Bayquniya. So as I said, some people say it's Umar ibn Muhammad ibn Fattuh. Why is this important for us to know? It's because if a person wants to have ikhlas al niyyah a sincere int- intention in any action that he or she does, even if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes out the name of this person, the action stays around. The actions. So, always looking to the intention. Or the other way around. Or the other way around. Even if Allah, subha- if the, even if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes out the name, yes. But maybe, maybe Allah will keep the name and He'll keep the action as well. Maybe as it happened to certain books, for, for example, Imam Bukhari, his text is in no way called Sahih al-Bukhari. It's no way called Sahih al-Bukhari, but when this individual's niyyah was so pure, for Allah's sake, you'd find that even the name of the book changed to sort of like, you know, uh, entail the author, Sahih al-Bukhari, where before it was Jannah Sahih. You know. So similarly, over here you have this author who... His book is extremely widely studied. Anywhere you go pretty much in the world, when you say the first, or a lot of places in the world, when you say, I want to study hadith, the first thing that they do is they, take, they get you to study this text right here. They get you to study al but, it, but, 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 when, but when they're looking at the text, nobody knows the name of the author. Nobody knows the, the, the name of the author. So indication that, you know, like Imam Malik, for example, in the time when he was writing Mawatta Imam Malik, there was a lot of uh, people writing Mawatta's as well. Mawatta'at. There was a lot of people writing Mawatta's as well. So, and, and, and apparently, you know, you'd see that some of these people, other people that are writing the Mawatta's are better than Imam Malik. So that's why some people complained. They said to Imam Malik, you know, why is it that you're writing a Mawatta? Fulan is writing it. Who, who told you to go write it? Who told you to go? Who, why do you have to write it? Where there's other people writing it as well. A mawta. Mawta basically means muessa, something made easy. Okay? Um, so, um, so Imam Malik, he said, you know, the, you'll find out later on which one of these, which one of these had the intention purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we look today, there is no Muwatta from the time of Imam Malik except Imam Malik's Muwatta. It lived nearly 1100 years and all the other ones passed. And there, nobody even mentions them, nobody even knows what they were, nobody knows anything like that. Similarly, as I said, Birkuniya here, you have the author who, who supposedly was in the 11th century or maybe the 10th century, okay? But nobody knows, nobody knows his name. You know, people say Umar, people say Taha, nobody's sure about it. You have Ibn Ajr Rum, it was, you know, Ajr Rumi, and you have Ibn Ajr Rum, 
it was said that he took his text, he wrapped it up in a bottle and threw it, threw it in the ocean. And he said that if you know, he said to himself that if this is for Allah's sake, then Allah will preserve it. And Allah did preserve it. To this day, it's preserved. Nobody starts studying the Arabic language except one of the main texts that he goes through is Ajr Rumi. Every one of you know that text, Ajr Rumi. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wished for it to be preserved. Similarly, you know, this is the case with uh, our author right here. We don't know his name, we don't know much about him. <laughs>